Alright guys, Tactical Bit here back again today, hope you're enjoying your Monday so far, and today is a rare one on this channel, we're gonna do a double upload, this video I wanted to talk about Dallas of course winning the Chicago Home Series and all the drama that went down yesterday surrounding that, the online stuff, Chicago versus Dallas, Atlanta versus Dallas, plenty to discuss there and I'm really intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. In a couple of hours though, I wanted to talk about this parasite drama situation, Call of Duty Twitter at its finest to be honest, effectively just to tease that video going live in a couple of hours time, parasite during the the online um, challenges side of the uh, the Huntsman Open series bracket. He is DMing the girlfriend of his teammate and gets dropped from the team. Honestly, remarkable stuff, but I do want to talk about that in a couple of hours' time. First of all, let's get into the nitty gritty of yesterday's action. Thank you to Cam Allen for the stats I'm going to share with you and Cod Gamepedia for the lovely graphics. Let's go on to the first series of the day, then that being Atlanta versus Seattle Surgeon. Apathy had some power outage initially, so it looked like either Proto or Naval might have to step into the starting lineup, but Apathy made it back, but, you know, the result wasn't too much different to what a lot of people were expecting here. All the respawns go the way of FaZe, but map number one was just incredible. Simp, of course, yesterday against the London Royal Ravens, dropping, or maybe two days ago, dropping the kill record of 49 on Azir Cave, a map which is one of the most AR-heavy maps we have seen in a long time. To put those numbers up with a sub were just remarkable. I was like, you know, is anyone going to drop 50 this year? Unlikely. Maybe someone will manage it on Gunrunner. But Simp breaks his own record 50 in 32 or something outrageous on this map number one. What are you meant to do against that? Then game two, a really impressive search on some Petrograd from Seattle, to be honest. Uh, Slack had a great map. They win that 6-5. But the next two maps were relatively comfortable. You always felt like Atlanta phase were in the advantage on this one. And this is what the stats look like overall. So Simp with a 1.2. Honestly, the slang from Atlanta phase was fantastic on the whole, but kind of what you'd expect when you're winning three respawns. And Panna just has a horrible series, right? Like less than a 0.5 KD. We haven't really seen anything like this from a player. Like Sim got more kills map one than Panna did in the entire series, which is honestly incredible. But, you know, it's not easy just to say drop Panna, drop Panna, etc, etc. There's more factors at play here. Great players still have bad series too, and it's definitely possible to happen against an Atlanta phase. But, you know, maybe Seattle will have to look at themselves a little bit more here because still, the only team they're beating in the league so far is the Los Angeles Grillers, probably the worst team in the league. So not an ideal situation, but let's talk about this next series then, because this is, I'm sure, a one that a lot of you guys will have some thoughts on. Dallas versus the Chicago Huntsman. Before this tournament and a few times, because I thought these teams were going to match up properly at the Dallas Home Series, at the online one at least a couple of weeks back, that didn't happen in the end. But my opinion before that was that if these two teams match up, I am going to favour the Dallas Empire for a number of reasons. First of all, I think they've got better over the last few months. It's been a few months now since they've played the Huntsman. I think it was early February at the London Home Series was the last time they played. But at that event and at Minnesota before that, Huntsman had always got the better of them. Three in zero on LAN, the, the three three times these guys have played. But, you know, it's no secret that Huntsman maybe have had some chemistry issues over the last few months or so. Dallas, of course, over time, you would expect them to get better, given that Shotzi and Illy were on the team, giving them a little bit more time, you would expect them to improve. Then added on to that, the online factor, which means that guys like Shotzi and Illy don't really have the pressure of the crowd, and also, you know, kind of been known to be great online players regardless. Of course, that is going to help their development to become a great team, in my opinion. So for a number of reasons, and, you know, formal playing from Los Angeles, also should be noted that Illy was playing from Canada, so it wasn't like everyone on the Dallas Empire was in the same space. I think 8 out of the 10 guys were in Texas, um, you know, based around that area, all of these players, apart from, as I just said, Formula in LA and Illy up in Canada. But with all that in, in consideration, I felt like Dallas would have the advantage in this matchup, and Dallas just played lights out right here. Like, you can't say it any other way. They, uh, you know, they took Huntsman to town on this one. Not number one, especially, they played really well. And game two, they didn't slow things down. You know, Ramazza was interesting, right? Because you know, the Huntsman, why are the Huntsman picking this map? It doesn't seem to be that great for them. Dallas kind of, um, yeah, they, they were dominating the most part of it. Then the search and destroy, it wasn't really close. Game three, um, there was a big comeback made by, you know, by um, by Empire through the series and nearly, or through the uh, domination. And then, you know, Chicago nearly brought it back towards the end. But even from about three minutes in, you felt like Empire had the upper hand here. And, you know, just to look at these statistics, well, this is a funny thing to mention, first of all. Clayster brings this up. So 
and this is what his camera looked like. He brought the net gear up on um, on screen. I think he went AFK like 30 seconds left in the third map just to go and put this up on screen. So obviously he's taken it kind of lightly, but this is what the stats look like overall. And I'm sure you guys will find this very interesting. So look, obviously a lot of people coming at him and say, look, Dallas massive onliners. You know, there's a few comments I have on this and I am intrigued to hear your thoughts down below. So First of all, the last event they played of the Dallas Home Series, that was an online event. They got kind of uh, taken to town by the Minnesota Rocker at times, got rocked by them, I guess you could say. And that wasn't a great event for them, right? So not just because it's online, they're dominant. But, you know, in my opinion, they were going to be better online than they were online. The guy, Shotzi just played unbelievable this tournament, right? And he's probably the main guy people are talking about here in terms of improvement from LAN play to online play. Now, let's not say that Shotzi was awful on LAN. When they actually, I mean, of course, this team was won a LAN event, right? They won the Los Angeles home series. I think um, Chicago were there as well, but Chicago lost earlier in the tournament to Florida, I believe, or whatever exactly happened. But um, yeah, regardless, they haven't beaten Chicago or FaZe in a LAN environment, but they did still win a LAN event. And Shotzi was really, really good at that event, to be honest. I think they gave him the, AV the MVP, maybe, just about in that one. So, you know, he was definitely on the up. And it's no surprise that this guy is starting to play really well. He's a LAN Halo World Champion and MVP, I believe a couple of years ago now. He's done a lot of great things on LAN and moving into Call of Duty, obviously there was going to be a transitionary period and online has clearly helped that. The fact that you don't have to play with the crowd and the, the nerves that that creates playing a team as, as up there as Chicago Huntsman and how difficult that could be to play in front of uh, their home crowd, I guess, wherever they go pretty much. Of course, that's going to help the likes of Shotzi and Illy. But it's no surprise to anyone, I don't think, that these guys are improving throughout the year. And Shotzi, people expected to be a monster when he really got to form. And I'm saying, uh, my opinion is that online has helped him come to this really high level Call of Duty earlier than he would have done if he was playing on LAN. But I don't think this kind of level is particularly unexpected by the end of the year or start of next year or something like that. Shotzi was expected to get to a really high level. The fact he's done it earlier may be online related for sure. There is an element of that, but it's clearly not the only factor at play here, which is the key point, right? Like, you know, 3 0 when Chicago beat Huntsman. Chicago beat Huntsman. Chicago beat Empire last time in February on LAN. There was a 3-0 to the Huntsman. Now it's a 3-0 the other way around. Internet isn't the only factor at play here, right? Like there's clearly more factors at play than just internet connection. Teams have got better, teams have got worse. There's other things to consider, right? So some interesting discussions about this. Hastro says a little bit of sweet. Uh, when we can get back on LAN, we'll have to try and match them there too. Because, of course, online is different to LAN. I'm not trying to say they're equivalents. But, you know, we get some interesting replies. So, Hastro, do you really think we miraculously provide our players a fiber internet that all that with that all that YouTube money on the Huntsman can't get access to? Literally $80 a month fiber. And as, Jay, and as JP says here, come on, everyone knows that teams can't improve after a few months. Online is the only reason. And as Crowder says here, made way too many mistakes of course, we'll go into the final in just a second here. Um, shot such a bad take. They won the online event, or they won a LAN event already. Give credit where it is due. And this is my tweet on the matter. I didn't really articulate this as best as possible. What I was trying to say here really is that online isn't the only thing for consideration. Empire have clearly improved so far this season. And it's no surprise that, you know, even before we went to online, Chicago were kind of dropping off the pace a tiny little bit. And um, as Illy says here, he was playing in Canada as well. Just wanted to mention this final tweet before we go on to the final of the event, which was RCC saying that they vetoed the Rambo Ray, the coach, vetoed the Texas host, even though JCAP then replied to this and said, because we talked about the other day that these dedicated servers aren't in great locations for the likes of Crim6 and the Empire. They added some new servers, and supposedly there's a Texas one that Rambo Ray and the Empire were vetoing in this new server veto process that they have implemented. RCC is clearly not particularly happy about that situation, but then JCAP replied to this saying that he'd heard that the Texas one was the most slaggy and Skippy. So it's an interesting situation, right? You'd imagine that they could play on a Texas host, given that eight other players are in Texas. Then again, Illy's up in Canada, Formal's over in LA. Maybe they decide to do something else, but still, the fact that you can veto host is kind of interesting. Um, maybe it'd be better for the CDL to kind of just decide where the match is going to be played from in terms of uh, trying to find a neutral host. But yeah, be intrigued to hear your thoughts on that down in the comment section below. Um, really interesting results. And of course, Empire follow it through to the grand finals, winning the game number one on Gunrunner. 
this was just such high level Call of Duty this series it was really really impressive to watch two teams pretty much at the peak of their powers right now phase were a little bit sloppy in a few of the maps but Empire really playing lights out at times and yeah this game one was impressive map number two as I was about to say is probably one of the best maps we have seen this entire year honestly for a long time every single round of search and destroy was super close it was 2v2s 1v1s at time clutch factor after clutch factor really impressive how these guys were playing it they were trying to play for picks over at the b site then they bait out kind of an a rush which sometimes atlanta phase would throw in an a rush over towards that site on some petrograd and sometimes they would fake it and then play out so you know the um, the dallas empire guys had to stack a couple of guys over at the a site and then they would slowly work a b play simp would hold with the sniper cross to make sure they couldn't get back because he's just unbelievable with a sniper but so many ra rounds came down to time super close um it was such an intense map honestly unbelievable simp had a 1v2 in the final round as well just um him versus clayster was a really cool situation given that they won the world championship together last year and if dallas had lost the series they would have really rued that map because they kind of threw it away but one of the best search and destroy maps i've seen super down to the wire um very intense but then dallas empire clutch up the last two maps win the uh, domination on hackney yard and then they take the hard point as well in a 250 to 200 so yeah, dominant respawns from the Dallas Empire. This is really impressive stuff. Yes, two hard points got taken off the Atlanta phase by the New York subliners, but I didn't really expect a team to do it twice in the same tournament. And honestly, you kind of have to say right now, Empire are the team to beat. Like the fact that they've beaten Atlanta phase right here, and they beat the Chicago Huntsman. Yes, it's online. Maybe the same situation wouldn't have been happening on LAN. I'm not going to try and claim that Empire would still be this dominant online force that they seem to be right now in a LAN environment. There are different factors at play, as I've said the entire video. But having said that, we are playing online, right? And these tournaments still matter. And as Clay says in just a second here, you know, the, the checks still count, right? You can still cash the checks. So with all that in mind, Empire are probably the team to beat right now. And they're, they're the gold standards. Yes, it's online. It wouldn't have been the same on LAN, you could argue. But still, um, the, the point still stands. They're probably the strongest squad. So this is how it looked overall. Maniac, Selian with some decent KD. Simp, honestly, not with his best grand finals performance. But Shotzi, once again, putting up a 1.2. And the rest of the slang on the Dallas Empire was really strong indeed. Especially after a kind of weak start from Crim6 on that very first map number one. And, you know, Crim, another championship to his name. I guess you could say this isn't a championship. Championship, um, you know, it's more like a win rather than a championship, but it still counts for something. I'm not going to claim it's a full-on championship or anything, but you know, as Clayster says, the chip still counts, and uh, and you know, the check still counts. <laughs> as Cam Allen says, top ten overall KD. Shotzi coming out firing with a 1.29. Um, he just played lights out this whole weekend. And online, as I say, it was a factor, but I don't think it's the only factor. I think he's clearly improved as a player. If he was playing online at the start of this year, you know, he wouldn't have a 1.29. Right? There, there's levels to the improvement. Octane with a 1.28 scraps up here as well so some impressive stuff and as Glacer says the chip may not count but them checks do because it's still big money on the line here that it that is going along so yeah that's the video for today enjoy to hear your thoughts in the comment section below well as i say video for the day there's another one coming in a couple of hours on this very interesting topic but this is what the cdl looks like right now empire number one huntsman number two phase number three in terms of overall points but you would expect phase to rise up because they've got an event in hand we would say um and this is the results from the rest of the league and this is how the bracket looks overall so dallas empire take it down intrigued to hear your thoughts on this one below how much difference did online make to this tournament are dallas just massive onliners i think it's hard to argue that given crim6 is the most winning player of all time in a lan environment but you know obviously it has helped some of their players improve to some degree but i think that there are more things to consider than just its online play huntsman were falling off before we even went to online empire were getting better before we even went to online won an event on lan let's not forget and they seem to have been keeping up that trend and um yeah impressive to see crim6 just managing to make it work once again whatever the circumstances circumstances are and probably becoming the team to beat right now atlanta phase kind of looked a little bit lost at times and it was impressive to see empire with crim6 and clayster this kind of old guard of call of duty still putting it right up there with the best that the modern day has to offer and proving that this old style of cards where you mix in your younger talents with your older veterans can still be the thing to do with phase trying to prove that that doesn't necessarily have to be the case but yeah thanks for watching as always like if you guys enjoyed subscribe if you're new i'll see you in a couple of hours time I'll see you next time.